Hi guys, so uh, today was pretty sunny as you can see and I thought it would be a good time to do a video on whether homosexuality is natural or unnatural. So as you're aware, there's been lots of stuff in the media about LGBT rights and homosexuality recently. Uh, there was that thing with the BBC where the BBC and Birmingham Central Mosque they were supposed to be doing a debate inside the mosque and Birmingham Central Mosque cancelled last minute. What's interesting about this is that apparently the BBC let the Birmingham Central Mosque know about this two hours before the event. If that's true, two hours is just way too short amount of time. It's very unprofessional. On the other hand, you've got the Imam then saying things like, if you want to accommodate homosexuals, you might as well accommodate compulsive liars, compulsive gamblers and pedophiles. I'm not even going to go into that now because I don't have time. On the other hand, you've got in the US all these extremist fundamentalist Christian groups, so quite neocon, and they are messing things up for LGBT rights in the States, but also they're exporting their kind of anger and hate to uh, Europe, where they're lobbying in Brussels and paying lobbyists in Brussels to take down some of the LGBT laws. So it's an important topic, and the whole natural unnatural argument does play a role in this. I know a lot of you will say something like it's consensual so it shouldn't matter whether it is natural or not and I agree with you but what's important is that people have used this concept of it's unnatural to say well because it's unnatural you shouldn't be doing it now I'm not any better uh, when I was young I was very confused about this topic I'm straight uh, so I could never understand why someone who's a guy would like another guy it, that's not how I felt and the same thing I guess with with females liking females. It's a very controversial topic so please read the disclaimer I'm gonna put up now before you get into a flame war with me as an angry internet activist from whatever side. So what I'm gonna do is go through the top 10 studies that I think are relevant for this debate. With identical twins they share 100% of the same genetic material. With non-identical twins they share about 50% which is no different to your normal brother or sister relationship. And then obviously you've got normal brothers and sisters. There's a key difference. With the twins, both of them, identical and non-identical, share the same or similar environments within their mom's womb. While with the normal brother and sister, it's not the same usually because you've got five years difference between you, one year difference or whatever. What this allows you to do is look at what the genetic influences are on things. In this case, it's homosexuality. As well as looking at how the situation in the womb affects you as well. Bailey and Pillar found that in twins, which were male, the non-identical twins had a 22% chance that both of them would be homosexual. He also found that if they were identical twins and they shared all of the genetic material, they were 52% chance of being both attracted to men. He found the same thing with sisters. So if you were a non-identical twin sister, you would have a 16% chance that you'd both be attracted to women. If you were identical, so you had 100% of the same genetic material, you were exactly 48% chance to both be attracted to women. What this shows is that the more genetic material is shared, the more the propensity that both people will be homosexual. There's a guy called Dr. Hamer who found that if you had a maternal cousin or a maternal uncle who was attracted to the same sex, you were also more likely to be attracted to the same sex. So following this trail of thought, he thought, okay, if it's maternal, it's probably something to do with the X chromosome because we get that from our moms. But he did a small study on a part of your genes called the XQ28. And what he found was that if you were gay and both of your brothers, you were 33% likely to share that region of your genetics. A big problem with this is that it had a small sample size. So although it was an interesting study, it's not conclusive evidence. But Mustansky in 2005, looking at this area as well as other areas, in 456 twins, and he found evidence for XQ28 again, but he also found evidence for other regions. These were the ZP36, the 8Q12, and the 10 P26. The first two of these are autosomal, which means that they are actually passed on both by your mom and your dad. So the whole maternal thing may not be as important as Hamer thought. Now ZQ36 was seen as one of the most important ones. And what's really cool is that this has an impact on the hypothalamus and how your hypothalamus develops. You'll see later on in the studies why this is important. Just to be clear, this doesn't mean that there's a single gene that's you know, the gay gene. There's different genes and different environmental factors that have an impact on what makes you homosexual. 
Let's step back for this study. In the 1970s, we weren't really sure if male or female brains were different to each other, whether in humans or animals. We then found out that actually they were different in animals, where Raisman and Field did a study and found that animals had different male and female brains. We then thought, hmm, are male and female brains any different in humans? In 1985, James Swab found exactly this. He found that male humans and female humans had different brains. This is really obvious for us right now because we have all the brain scanners. But back then, we didn't even have that. So the best we could do was cut things up. But then something really weird happened. James Swab looked at the brains between homosexuals and heterosexuals in 1990, and he found that the suprachiasmatic nucleus was twice as big in homosexuals than in heterosexuals. But this needed to be proven further, so Dr. LeVay started looking at the hypothalamus. But the reason he started doing that is because another scientist, Dr. Laura Allen, had found that in men and women, the hypothalamus was different sizes. LeVay opened up the brains of cadavers, which are basically dead people. He looked at the brains of homosexuals and heterosexuals. And what he found inside was that for women who like men, straight women, and men who like men, gay men, the parts of the hypothalamus that Dr. Laura Allen had found were different were the same for both of them. These two groups had very different hypothalamuses to each other. And they started calling this area the sexually dysmorphic nucleus. Big criticism for the study is it only had 41 people in the sample size. Uh, there's only so many dead people you can cut up. However, very recently, the Karolinska Institute has done a huge study which is very similar to this one, uh, which we'll talk about later, We're using brain scanners. So there's loads of documentaries on YouTube you can see which are around animal homosexuality. I'd recommend you don't watch it while you're working because they're basically animals doing it. Now whether the animals are homosexual or heterosexual is irrelevant because animals doing it is not so good with your boss. But let's look at some studies that were not observational. In 2010, the KAIST, which is the Korean Advanced Institute for Science and Technology, looked at what happened to mice when they had one section of their gene deleted called the FUCM gene. And what they found was that without this gene, the female mice became attracted to other female mice. When they looked at their brains, what they found was that these female mice had masculinized brains, which is similar to what we talked about earlier with human brains. But let's look at even more animals and particularly the hypothalamus. This was a study by Dr. Rosella who found that in animals like sheep where the proponents of homosexuality is relatively high, it's like 8%. When you looked at the brains of these sheep, what did you find? Now remember we talked about the sexually dysmorphic nucleus. When Dr. Rosella opened up the brains of sheep, he found that when you had a uh, ram that showed homosexual behavior and you looked at its sexually dysmorphic nucleus, it was half the size of heterosexual sheep. It was basically the same as a female sheep. This has been replicated across ferrets, quails, rats, etc, etc, lots of animals. Remember we talked about the Karolinska Institute. So in 2008, basically, they looked at 90 males and females. They found that both the size and the shape of the brains were different between heterosexual men and homosexual men and vice versa for heterosexual women and homosexual women. So what they found is that me, as a straight dude, uh, I'll have the left side of my brain slightly larger than my right. It's not symmetric, it's called asymmetrical. With a female who's straight, her brain will be pretty much symmetrical on both sides. Lesbian women will have a brain that's similar to mine with the left side larger. It's asymmetric. What's great is that new advances in brain scanning, which I must, you must have seen on TV, uh, allows them to see this in living humans like you or me. They also found that in the amygdala, which is a very uh, important part of your brain, it's a very ancient part of your brain, straight women have more connections in the amygdala on the left. Gay men also have more connections on the amygdala on the left. There's a guy called Dr. Kazi Rahman, who's a professor in Queen Mary University, which isn't far from me. What he did was the largest twin same-sex attraction study in the world, where he looked at 7,452 twins. This is a lot like the first couple of studies we talked about, but it was huge. And the results are pretty interesting. He found that 35% of variation is down to genetic material. So 35% of the reason that one gay brother and another gay brother, who are twins, will be gay is because of genetic influences. But he also found that 64% was down to non-societal environmental factors. And what this means is things like the situation in your mother's amniotic fluid, the kind of hormones you're getting when you're a baby in, the, in your mom's womb, etc. This is nothing to do with parenting and society. This is non-societal factors. Similarly with women, 18% of it was down to genetics and 
exactly like with men, 64% was down to non-societal environmental factors. This also helped him conclude in another meta study, the most important thing seems to be around androgens, which is uh, the kind of hormones you get when you're a fetus in your mom's womb. What's really cool about this study is it's a very strong piece of evidence because essentially your 35% of it is genetic material and 64% of it is things like hormones. There's these two putative hormones, which are called A and D and EST, basically like pheromones. A and D you get from male armpits and EST you get from female urine. And what this study did was look at how gay men, lesbian women, straight men and straight women responded to e A and D and EST. When a straight guy smelled the hormones, which comes from women, there was a certain part of the brain that lifts up, which I'll tell you which part it is later. With straight women, they smell it and the only parts of the brain that light up are the normal smelly part of the brain. They call the olfactory part of the brain. With gay men, unlike straight men, their brain did not light up. Guess which part of the brain was lit up for straight males? It was the hypothalamus again. Something's different about the hypothalamus of gay men compared to straight men. It's as simple as that. So this is my favorite topic uh, in, this, in this conversation completely. It's about older brother. A guy called Blanchard found that for every older brother you had, you had a 33% increase in the chance that you would be homosexual. Dr. Kazi Rahman that we spoke about before has called this one of the most reliable epidemiological variables that they found. His study found that if you had a older brother, then you were two times more likely to be homosexual than the rest of the population. But if you had four, you were three times more likely to be homosexual than the rest of the population. So it's it's quite a strong effect. There's a problem with his first study though. It didn't consider what happens if the older brother effect is conditioning. So let's say you've got those older brothers so that affects you somehow socially. Bogart looked at 944 individuals, but he also looked at what happens to brothers when they're adopted. What Bogart found was really cool. Even if you were adopted, the fact that you had biological older brothers made you much more likely to be gay. And this effect was found even in adopted kids. What does this all mean? According to the largest same-sex twin study in the world by Kazi Rahma, 98% for men and 84% for women is down to genetics and non-societal factors. It's a bit hard to entangle all this because, you know, genes and, and hormones, things like that, they work with each other. But what we can say is that the environment in your mother's womb and the hypothalamus is very strongly linked to why you are homosexual. And this also it goes with your brain structure, etc. This can be seen in both humans and animals. Interesting question. For those of you who know a little bit about natural selection, you'll ask, well, why is it not selected out? You know, gay people will not be reproducing if they're not attracted to the same sex, to a different sex. But genetics doesn't work like that, and neither does natural selection. This is like saying, why from a young age are some people really good at drawing and some people are really good at mathematics? It's hard to entangle, but it doesn't mean that you're at a disadvantage. Now, there is an idea that homosexuality is some sort of Western export into you know, the Middle East or whatever, but that's just not true. Uh, there's lots of evidence of, not now, but even in the past, in Japan, in India, in, across Africa, etc., 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 of homosexuality being something that happened. Uh, I might do another video on this, but it depends on my time, really. So, peace.